Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time in the best of the best. In today's video, we'll be doing a review and how to play video on Duffers, the golf inspired deck building game. So let's get into it. So like I said, Duffers is a deck building game based around golf where you and other players compete on getting the best score on the course. And to do so, you need to buy different clubs and equipment, all while trying to avoid bad luck and messing up on the holes. But let's jump into how you play the game and then I'll go through my full review after that. All right, now that we've got the game out, let's walk you through some of the basics on how you set up the game and how you play so you have a better understanding of how the game works and then I'll jump into my review after that. So when it comes to the setup process, there's several different things that you wanna do to set up the game. First thing is picking your caddy card. There's a bunch of different ones to choose from. And once you've done that, you then will lay out your player number tokens on the cards. Now you can play a nine hole game, or if you wanna play a shorter game, you can play a six hole game. If you did happen to be playing a six hole game, just take off the last three ball markers for your player. The next thing you wanna do is set up the holes. So like I said, you can play six holes or nine holes. So there's a bunch of different hole types included in the game. One thing to note though is this top part here that says A1. Uh, there's gonna be A's and B's. So A is for advanced, B is for beginner. So if you want an easier game, simply use the beginner holes when you start the game. But as you play a few times, you might just wanna mix it up and have it randomized as you play. So you'll set out the holes and then from there, you wanna set up the base stacks of cards that you can buy from and that you'll encounter through the game. So this pile here is the duff pile, which is basically negative things that will happen and be added to your hand. So hook shots, slices, various things like that. This pile will be vintage drivers. So this is a decent club that you can buy and it's available all the time for all players and it costs 80 credits to buy. So you'll see this here where people have access to it. The next pile is broken tees. Every time you get two of these at the end of the game, it's gonna minus one stroke from your total strokes for the game. There's a limited supply of these, but you can buy them anytime. You also have a basic putter card. This counts as a putter, which you'll need to complete any hole but it's not the best because it costs three strokes every time you use it. But it is accessible to everyone throughout the game. This pile here are luck cards. There's a bunch of different ones throughout the game. Sometimes they're good luck, sometimes they're bad luck. So be wary of that when cards make you draw luck cards. Could benefit you, but it could hurt you as well. Next thing you wanna do is set up your player's base hands and the starting deck for the game. So to do that, you give each player seven chip shot cards and each player gets three whiff cards, which is a duff or a negative effect. You'll shuffle these together, forming your initial deck for each player, and then you can put them on your caddy card. The next thing you wanna do is set up rewards on the holes for completing them. So these are the equipment cards. You can simply shuffle them and then you'll deal out one reward on each hole for the game. And so how this works is the first player to clear the hole for the first time will actually get this reward added to their deck for the rest of the game. And so it can make their deck more powerful. So it can be beneficial to be the first person to finish a hole. So the next step is setting up the pro shop. So one thing to note is that there are a bunch of equipment cards that have the star on the top. And so if you're looking for an easier game to get started, you wanna use these items that have the star on them as kind of the first items that are gonna come up in the pro shop because they're not super expensive and they can really get the ball rolling as you're playing the game. You don't have to play this way, but your first couple games, you might wanna do this. And so with that said, just shuffle up these star equipment cards and you're gonna put five face up on top of the board. This becomes your initial pro shop where you can buy stuff. The rest of them, you can just put on top of the rest of the equipment and club cards. And then this can become the draw pile when you restock the shop. Now when it comes to your turn, you'll draw five cards. So one, two, three, four, five from your deck. And then you have a couple different options. You can play cards for yardage or you can play them for credits. And so what that means is if you play them for credits, I've got 20, 40, 60, 80 credits. And then I've got this whiff card. If you're using cards for yardage, you have to use the whiffs as they add penalty strokes to your play. But if you're just using cards for credits, 
So you can pretty much just discard the whiffs and then carry on with your turn. So if I've got 20, 40, 60, 80 credits, I now have options to buy either cards from the base stack cards here at the bottom that are available all the time, or I might go to the pro shop and decide to buy some of these clubs because they're usually going to be better than the base clubs you can get at the bottom here. So in this case, I've got $80. So let's say I want to buy this regulation putter for 75. I'm now going to add it to my discard pile. That's where all the cards that you buy go. And that's pretty much the end of my turn. I'll redraw back up to five cards in my hand. I'll also restock the store at the end of my turn, and then it will go to the next player and they will continue in a similar fashion. Now, one thing to note about your caddy card is it has the ability where you can store cards on them until the next turn. And so this could be beneficial if you want to save up credits. Maybe you want to complete a future hole and you want to store a putter there. Again, lots of different options you can do, but you can store a card there as you play. Another thing to note is that as you complete holes, you'll reveal different letters on the caddy card. When you do, you'll activate the other abilities listed on the card. So for example, A allows you to trash one chip shot card which is like your base card and trashing it means removing it from the game completely. And when you do that, it's now worth double the amount of credits. So you'd get 40 credits for trashing this and removing it from the game. Again, the mindset behind this is it's going to steadily improve your deck over time by getting rid of weaker cards. B allows you, when you purchase a card, to place it on the caddy card if it happens to be an open spot instead of putting it in your discard pile, which means you could access it faster and if you unlock C, this means you can place up to two cards on your caddy card instead of just one. So pay attention to those abilities as you play. Now let's flash forward a bit and show you how you complete holes. So in order to complete holes, you need a putter card, as you can see with the P here. Again, they always usually say putt card as well, or again, putter sometimes here, but just look for the P. That's an easy designation when you see it. So again, these putt cards are required on all holes to complete them. On top of that, you wanna pay attention to this bottom part here as it gives you sometimes extra conditions you need to meet to complete the hole. So for example, no chip shots can be used to complete this hole. So extra limitations making the hole harder. So pay attention to that. Another thing to note is the yards on the card. So you need to get the yardage, obviously to complete the hole, but you can't go over by too much. So you can only go over the yardage by up to 50 yards. So again, with this one, I could shoot up to 165 yards and still complete the hole. And I would do that through a combination of my clubs and then finishing it off with a putter. Another thing to note too, is that if you get exactly the yardage amount, so in this case, 115, you'll also get to trash any card of your choice from your hand, discard pile, or deck. So that's very powerful and it can help you get rid of duff cards or other negative cards in your deck. If you've completed a hole, you'll simply put your player marker covering up your player spot. If you're the first person to do it, you'll also get the equipment card that's listed on there. You just put that in your discard pile and then you'll just come over to the scoring sheet and write down how many strokes it took you to complete the hole. Determining that's pretty simple. You just add up the number of strokes on the different cards that you used for yardage to complete the hole. One other thing to note is that you don't have to complete the holes in order. If you've got the yardage, and the requirements to complete a hole, you can do any of them in any order you choose. Now, when it comes to wrapping up the game, once one player has completed all of the holes, every other player will have one more turn to try and finish the rest of the holes they're trying to complete. Any holes that aren't completed, you need to double the par listed on the card and add that to your score. At this point, you'll add up the subtotal of the holes, you'll subtract any bonuses, so again, if you have broken tees or other cards that reduce the total number of strokes, you'll do that. And then you'll add up your ultimate total to find out who won the game. Beyond that, there's a few additional rules just on the cards that explain what they do and how they work. So consult the rule book if you have any questions on that or feel free to drop a comment below if you have other questions. But again, now that you have a better understanding of how the game works, let's jump into my review. Well, again, guys, now that you know a bit more on how to play the game, how do I actually feel about it? So for me, I'm a huge deck building fan. And so when I saw that that's what this game was based around, I was already excited about it. I'm not necessarily a huge golfer. I've done it a few times, but I mostly play mini golf more than anything. So I didn't know how I would necessarily enjoy the theme, but this game is quickly becoming one of my favorite deck building games out there. 
As you saw in the how to play section of the video, the game itself is pretty easy to learn and pretty easy to play as well. I think that makes it really accessible to a lot of players. I think another reason for this is that people generally understand how golf works. You want better clubs and that's usually gonna help you perform better. And also that you wanna finish the hole in the least number of strokes as possible. So I think just the general idea of the game really makes sense to begin with. Plus the fact that it's a lot of fun is great too. One thing though coming into the game is I didn't really realize how much strategy can go into the game as well. Obviously you wanna get the lowest score as you play, but there's so many different ways to do it and so many different strategies you can attempt to do while trying to win the game. So for example, when you're trying to complete different holes, you have the option to go after whatever hole that you want. So you might have clubs that work better for some holes compared to others, depending on how your hand comes up as you play. Another thing you can do too, is maybe you're trying to complete holes very quickly, and you maybe don't care about how many strokes it takes you to complete the hole in attempts to beat everyone else to finishing the holes and leaving people stuck with a bunch of holes they have to complete on their final turn, which can make their score really rack up. Or again, maybe you wanna complete the holes in the exact yardage amount so you can get rid of bad cards from your hand and deck to make it that much easier to complete future holes. So again, there's a lot of strategy that can go into the game as you play, and I really like that. And I think that really plays into the replay value of the game as well, where each experience that you play is really different every time. I think this is also determined by the holes that you choose as you play the game as well. And so that was another aspect I really liked that you can play the game with six holes, you can play with nine holes, you can use beginner holes if you want a faster game, you can throw in advanced holes if you want a more complex game or you can just randomize it completely to have a different experience every time you play. And so again, I think the game has a lot of replay value in those aspects, which I really like. Another thing that's cool is the game is for one to four players, so there is a solo mode. So if you wanna get into that, you can, but I think it plays really good with two players as well. But on top of that, it worked with groups at the same time. Now I will say the game seemed to last a lot longer when we played with a group of four compared to a two player game. So in those instances, you might wanna turn things down to a six hole game. Otherwise the game could potentially get pretty long with everybody trying to complete all the holes. Not a bad thing, but if you want a shorter game, just something to keep in mind. I also thought it was pretty refreshing just to have a golf take on a deck building game. Like I said, deck building games are some of my favorite games in the board gaming space. And a lot of them end up being like dungeon crawlers or different things like that, where you're defeating big monsters, things along those lines, which is fine. I really like that kind of stuff. But if you wanna introduce someone to deck building that maybe isn't into that fantasy setting, this could be a great game to do it. Cause I think it's accessible to more players having the theme being golf related than maybe a fantasy dungeon crawling type game. I also really like that the game just has the different equipment cards, the pro shop available where you can upgrade your clubs, hire golf pros on your team and more. I think that really makes for some interesting twists in the game where you're trashing cards, you're able to shoot farther with your yardage. The golf pros and coaches can help you get better results with your game. And it just really ends up for a really fun experience. But let me know in the comments below if you feel this game looks cool, if you've played this game before, what your experiences have been. Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to pick up a copy of the game, there'll be links in the description below where you can do so. And again, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out. And if you'd like to help us support the channel, pick out content and more, become a patron of ours at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Patreon. And if you'd like to plug into our live streams and let's plays you do on the channel, you can follow us on Twitch at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you more soon.